The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers Podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Welcome to another episode of Cheeky Travelers from The Upshot Project. We are Hayden and Solen. And we're here for a second episode talking about solo traveling. However, I've been I've been tasked with a question to start off with to sort of get things cheekily moving along. Cheekily moving along. <laughs> yeah, no, however you want to say it. And yeah. speaking of cheeks, have you ever gone? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> have you have you ever gone skinny dipping in the ocean? Oh, that's specific. I mean, skinny dipping generally, but I was, still, like, I was just thinking of ocean at the time. Uh, skinny dipping in the ocean. I have never. What? Yeah. Oh. I mean, the thing is, as a female solo traveling naked in the ocean, unfortunately, it's not the safest thing to do. You know what? That could be onto something. Yep. <laughs> but I've been um, skinny dipping before, but just in a pool. Oh, okay. Yeah, with you. <laughs> you were there. I was there, at least on one of those occasions. You were there. That's probably why I skimmed over to the ocean, because... Yeah. Oh. I've been... I mean, I guess I've been in uh, underwear on a beach mm. at night. I, I, don't, I don't know if you remember. It was the last... Oh, mon dieu. it was last Christmas when we were in Australia. You know how uh, we went to the restaurant? I can't remember if it was the 22nd of December or something like that. Then we went on the beach and we started dancing on the beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just so warm. I just took my clothes off and I was like in my bra and in my pennies. <laughs> right? <laughs> you remember? Yes. I, I feel that's the furthest I've done I, I mean that's a lie oh I, I was i was going <laughs> okay um i was going to sort of maybe argue the point because i just had a thought that when we were in new caledonia uh yeah yeah i've been semi <laughs> semi semi skinny dipping my top off yeah and i took a great photo that's now on instagram you, think you should check it out <laughs> you should check it out <laughs> We don't see much, just my back. Yeah, it's but true, true, half semi debate. Like, yeah, I felt very safe because there was no one. There was no. We one. had the whole beach to ourselves early morning. Oh, uh, and also, uh, we didn't have a shower for the last. No, no, we had a shower. One day. It was just a day for you. It was like forever, but yeah, yeah it, was just, it was exactly. It was just like exactly. like close to twenty four hours. Yeah, but when I was solo traveling, no, never. No, that's fair enough. Never felt safe enough to do it. Okay, shake the old yeah. Bottle. Well, thank you for your cheeky question, Hayden. No worries. <laughs> so I guess next episode I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one asking you the cheeky question. Yes. No, Are I, you ready? No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm never either. ready for your questions half the time. <laughs> me neither. Um. Yeah. So I guess let's dive right into it. Sure. Let's Are you ready? It. So like, yeah, as you mentioned, today's episode is about uh, solo traveling, and discovering ourselves throughout mm. our solo travel. So I guess my first question would be, well, let's start with the basics. Basics. Right? What made you want to go solo traveling at first? At first? Yeah. Uh, I think having having had the opportunity growing up to not uh, get too many presents, but see more parts of the world, um, I guess it sort of inspired this idea of like just exploring and stuff, but there was something that was sort of nagging at me because I had no like once I once I finished actually leading into finishing school I didn't know what I wanted to do and I was told it's a good idea to do this so I did a degree mm -hmm. I completed that I still didn't know what to do I didn't like that I 
didn't feel comfortable and I figured the best thing to do is to run away. So... <laughs> It's great. We have the same coping mechanism. <laughs> yeah. Like, where's that one, one more ticket? Um, mm. But yeah, so I basically found myself sort of looking for places that I'd seen on, whether it be social media pieces that mm. people told me and said, this was, this was amazing. But I think it initially started with trying to tick off bucket list items. So okay. initially mm. I was like, I really want to go bungee jumping. Like this year, I wanted to hit, like, I think it was 2017, I wanted to hit like multiple things oh, all yeah. at once. Sure, because the first solo travel you've, uh, the first solo travel you've done was in Australia. Yeah. Okay, then New Zealand. Yeah. But and that was part of your list that you're talking about. Yeah, so okay. Byron Bay was my first solo trip. Mm -hmm. It was only for like two, three nights. But why you decided to go solo? Was it just because no one could go with you or? It, it was it was i think because i wanted to see if because i think i'd been to a few bars in sydney uh shout out to sidebar great place <laughs> if you've got a bit of cash but it's like it's awesome because you sounded so much like a wanker yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, because i realized that like it's it it got really expensive particularly as the night continued but it's more that in that place, it was right underneath a hostel. All right. So underneath, underneath the hostel, you have every single kind of person there from all over the world mm. speaking English, maybe not. And it was just this amazing environment where people are like sharing stories of where they've been. Yeah. And I was like, and some, some people are like, I'd spoken to, like there was a French bloke who'd been to Byron Bay and things like that. And I was like, you know, I will try. Mm -hmm. And I think, Maybe there was an opportunity for me to maybe go with one of one of my mates or not, okay. but I th I wanted to go by myself. Okay. So how, how did you feel? Really, it felt really really strange, mm -hmm. really weird. I didn't know if it's almost like a, a guilt thing. Like, is this the right thing? I should be doing this with family, or I should be doing this with friends. Yeah. But I yeah, I still went and. When I got there, I didn't know, it felt really weird because I didn't know how to communicate with another human being all of a sudden. And okay. like, I didn't know how like to s start the conversation, even though I've done it so many mm -hmm. times beforehand. So going into the hostel and then finding my bed and then sort of sitting out outside by myself, just sort of like looking at everyone. Going, like I was actually, I, at the time though, I remember it, I remember it distinctly. I was sitting on like a tire swing or one of the, like a swing more yeah. or less. And I was sitting there just like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and then this like bloke came up to me and he's like, Hey, do you want a beer? And I was like, mm. uh, sure. Yeah. It was Corona. I'm not a fan, but sure. I'll have a beer. And then <laughs> whatever to stop this solitude. <laughs> yeah. This solitude wasn't what I was after. And then from then on, I ended up having a great couple of days because mm -hmm. I hung out with this guy who introduced me to stacks of other people. Yeah. And then I was like, this could be, I could be onto something here. And so the, after that, it was more bucket list items. So things like skydiving, things like bungee jumping. And I couldn't find any bungee jumping in Australia. So I thought, you know what? New Zealand does it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to New Zealand. And so I just booked a one way, oh, one way. I booked a return, a uh, one person trip, uh, return for like, it was like only a week or something. Okay. But I ended up skiing by myself, which I learned isn't as fun. Mm-hmm. Unless you've got like, you know, things to focus on, it's not as fun. I really love sharing that kind of activity with people, but did the bungee jump and that was exceptional because I met like other people that were yeah. doing it for the first time and we we're all going through these like roller coaster of emotions before we're literally falling off a 134 meter drop. Mm. And yeah, that started to spur this idea that there's other things outside of Sydney. Yeah. It would have been so crazy to. It was bungee jump. Yes. She said. It would have been so crazy to bungee jump and not share this experience with someone you know. Because I'm just thinking about these experiences. For me, I love to share it with someone I, I know and that I love. And like right after it, you feel the adrenaline. And before as well, super anxious. But like, who do you talk to about it? Mm, well, like, I, I don't know. Like, it's I, so I know, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. Mm. I totally get what you're saying. But I think because it was 
I was more self-focused at the time. Like, I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this for... Not just people. at the time. <laughs> Oof. Oh. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> you can leave out, like, minor problems at the door, man. Before the podcast starts. Oh. But, uh, thanks for that. Just ground me. Nice and public. banter. Got a bit of banter. But I ended up making, uh, at the time, a, a good mate. Like, um who was an Australian bloke also traveling who knew one or two other people mm. that I met afterwards. And he and I had never done it before. And so... Who I, was he? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Caleb? I'm going to okay. say his name is Caleb. I, I, I picture his face. I see his face. <laughs> but I... I, oh, I can't remember. For some reason, I'm feeling it's Caleb. Is anyway, it? I I remember chatting to him and he was... Consi- like. Because I talked to him at the hostel, I met him at the hostel, and then he wanted to do something like bungee jump. I said, man, come with me. We're doing it. Okay. We're doing it now. And he's like, oh, yeah. And so we were like, he was talking about, you know, doing like the massive swing that they've got as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, no, 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 we're bungee jumping. He goes, okay. Well, what about like the, the 40, uh, the, the little one, the 42? I was like, no. no. <laughs> what about the, the 45? No. <laughs> we're doing the big one and we're not going. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> Mm. So we booked it and he like he was shitting bricks. I was shitting bricks and it was just a great time because we went with like when we got onto this to sort of set the scene, the bungee jump is between two peaks of a valley. like oh, it's a yeah, valley yeah, yeah. that jump over. I, I saw a video of that one. Yeah. It's uh Helvin Helvis? Uh Presley. <laughs> not... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh it's, it's gonna bug me now. Uh but Basically, it's a, like a, a cable car that's sitting in between yeah. two peaks with a 134 meter drop mm-hmm. in between, and absolutely hilarious because we went with a bunch of rugby, like a small rugby team that was doing a tour as well. Yeah. And so watching these big, like burly guys about the same age as us, like you know, like thick shoulders and whatever mm-hmm. else, and they're all manly, like hey, whoa. and then when they got to like the the bun, like the jumping bit, oh it, all of them went shitting Nope. themselves. Dude, and... some people, they, they they went, they walked back? No, no, no. There was one bloke who, like, he, there, there was one bloke, he, he got to the edge, and he's the biggest, like, if you know anything about rugby, you know, the front row and the second row are mm-hmm. the biggest guys on the field. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, tall, yeah, yeah. they're thick, and they, this guy just stood at the end, this big man, and he just looked down, and he looked down for, like, a good 30 seconds. And he's just staring into the abyss below and he's like, what am I doing? <laughs> and then he, like, I I just sort of had a, a jump that was like, you know, spread, spread my wings like an eagle. Yeah. Kind of thing. And, then, and then I, like, at least that's where I see it. But <laughs> that's, how I mean, that's how I remember it anyway. Uh, I've got video footage. Uh, but the way that he jumped was like he was trying to get down off a big step. And this is a 134 meter step. Was he like <laughs> sitting down on the platform? Almost, platform? almost. Like he crouched down and then just went, huh. <laughs> and then just sort of like rolled forward. And then like it, a rock, it was a the, fallen rock. It was the greatest thing because then afterwards, like you get to watch the replay and stuff, and mm. all of us just crowded around his computer, going, "That's the best. <laughs> I want, I want a copy of this." But um, yeah, that sort of experience, like mm. with all these different people and everyone having this sort of sense yeah. of adrenaline and adventure, mm-hmm. was really awesome. And I loved what the Caleb. I'm gonna keep calling him Caleb for now. <laughs> I, I, it's gonna annoy me. I'm gonna have to look him up. Uh, sorry, mate. Um, I think he sort of in, had been traveling for a little bit, and he knew one or two other people as well, mm-hmm. and. The way that they're like, oh, like, come with us. We're going to go climb this peak. We're not going to pay for it. We're going to walk it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then we did it. It was, like, awesome fun. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, like, we're going to go out to a bar. Like, it felt awesome to be invited along on this adventure, almost to yeah. be a blueprint of what it's like so to travel. Like, yeah. So, like, was all this build up of you micro solo traveling? If It's not micro, but, it like, basically was. you know, all these micro solo traveling experiences, like it was so positive for you that then you decided, yeah, I'll do something even bigger. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I think, I think cause I didn't know where I was going in regards to career path, still don't, that traveling was something that I knew I could tangibly say for and do. 
and I knew that the doing, I felt myself growing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not the only one that solo traveled here. I met you while you were solo traveling. Mm -hmm. I think you were also semi traveling with a friend kind of at the time. But not kind of. Not anymore. Yeah. Not. Like, going through a breakup and my coping mechanism is to fly away as well like literally <laughs> very literally <laughs> literally flying away and as i mentioned i have family and friends so like the more i reflect on it the more i'm like was it really solo traveling because i joined some family members and then i did my own stuff you know what i mean i'm yeah. like oh does it really count or I'm a scam. <laughs> I'm a, no, I'm no, a scam. Fraud. You know what I mean? A fraud. Yeah, I'm a fraud. Um, yeah, so I guess my soul, like, yeah, I did. I basically decided to go alone. I mean, it was a safe choice. Like, I've always been to my family's place, and but with my parents, but now I did it alone. But I think... Oh, yeah. The first time I booked a real solo travel, <laughs> I so I was already in France at the time at my family place. And I was like, I'm going to check the um, I'm going to check the prices of the plane tickets. What's cheap around? Because, you know, traveling in Europe is super, super cheap. Well, at least it yeah. was. And I think I was a bit I was a bit bored. I felt like I wasn't enjoying my holidays as much. And I was like, ah. Oh, you know, I'll, I'll book something, just a small something. So I booked, not even a week, I booked like five days to England. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, you'll like, I'll see. So I went to London for one night and then the rest of the night I spent it in, in Brighton. Oh, you went south. Yeah. <laughs> And it was amazing. It was exactly what I needed. It was exactly what I needed. Which, which was what exactly? Just to challenge myself because my uh, yeah. my English back in back back in the days it was good, but it was just functional. You know, so traveling in England and you know, like the English accent isn't. The American accent, so it's it was super hard for me to understand. Oh yeah, I mean you go from well. the London accent to the Brighton accent, and anything in between, you like a, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the main reason why I wanted to do solo traveling was because I was bored in France, <laughs> at my family's place, and I was like, ah, you know what? Why not? We'll see. Sounds like a, sounds like a safe spot. And. If other people can do it, mm. why can I do it as well? Like, yeah. Well, that's fair enough. You know, I mean, like, yeah. You you sort of, it it sort of cultivated its own. I don't know. I guess the own idea. Mm -hmm. Like you've already you're already in the new place, but you're like it's not that new anymore. Yeah, exactly. I guess like prior to that, when I took my plane ticket to go to France, to be fair, I already had in mind that I wanted to do some solo traveling somewhere in Europe. Mm. And then, yeah, I started with England because it was the cheapest, um, cheapest back then. Then during that same summer, I went to other places, but I was joining some of my friends in like Italy. Was it also the same time that you met up with uh, a couple of mates in Greece at the same holiday? Mm. Was it? It wasn't. Oh, was it in 2017? I wasn't there. So. Yeah, I'm not sure. No, I think it was two years after that. Um, yeah, I joined my two of my best friends, Maud and Brian, in Greece. But we all started from different spaces because Brian is in the army and he was doing a mission in uh, Poland, you know? Yep. And he hasn't seen his girlfriend, Maud, for the past six months. So they they reunited in Greece and I reunited them as well. Well, to be fair, we spent I spent one night with uh, Brian before Mode joined us. Right. Yeah. Oh man, it was amazing. It was amazing. 
it was the best third wheel experience <laughs> of all of my life. <laughs> I mean, they're great people to hang around, so that makes sense. Definitely. But yeah, so small solo travels around Europe. Nothing too intense like you, I feel. Yeah. I was... But I don't, I don't know if it's because you're a male. It, yeah, it could be. It you could know. be part of that. I mean, whether it be through rebellion or just trying to see how close to death I could get without getting to it. Um, I'm yeah. not sure, but yeah. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. And like... Because you went for a whole year away. Well, yeah, I was you know? almost two years. Yeah, a year and a half. A year and a half. And is there a moment in your solo travels that you understood what solo travel can bring you? Is there a moment where solo travel, where it sort of brought me like a, a sense of understanding to so what are the possibilities? whatever it brought you <laughs> i guess oh well, i mean like new zealand's brought a lot of this sense of new place everyone's got the same idea they're like all looking to do things mm -hmm. every single day and they're also okay with taking a chill day if you know whether it be they party too hard the night before or they've just done too many hikes or something mm -hmm. like that so i think I think then was a, a good time, but when I, when I traveled through Asia, mm -hmm. I think, cause I, at this point, when I traveled the, the year and a half solo, that was in 28, May, 2018. And initially for three months, I was in the UK. Then I came back to Australia for like three weeks mm -hmm. and then I remember being on the phone to a friend who was living in uh, Hanoi in Vietnam. And so I, on, at the end of the phone call, I had booked a one way flight to Vietnam mm -hmm. <laughs> and just that I realized just how easy it is. Like if, if you don't have that you know, like lockdown sense of responsibility mm. or you're just running away from responsibility, depending on how you look at yeah. it. No, but okay. So, so in that sense, it's that moment that you understand what freedom meant to you. Yeah, because it was to you. Mm. because freedom, like the what what solid travel could bring is like if you didn't have a time limit, mm -hmm. you could ve and you and you had a bit of savings to back you, you could go almost anywhere. Like Vietnam was a great place yeah. for that because mm -hmm. I was able to not spend a lot of money, have a great time and explore so much and just the people and the culture. Because it was such a culture shock, I'd never been to that, like an Asian country before. Mm -hmm. And doing it solo was incredible. The people were just awesome. Mm -hmm. And what I what I what I learned from then was, uh, for a start, I'm like I, I come from a very privileged country, but also, if you're even even if you don't speak the same language, being able to connect with other people goes so so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that I keep searching for when I go traveling is to try and figure out how does this area work? Like, how do they talk to each other? Is it like, cause some places might like, I know in some markets say in Asia, it looks like it's really aggressive. Everyone like tries to rip each other's heads <laughs> yeah. off, but yeah. in fact, that's just the way they talk. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, you know, uh, you go to uh, places like Morocco and it's, kind of difference more like influencing you to come over and but like aggressively versus yeah. like just yelling at you to do something yeah and it's it's really interesting the way that different cultures work and i just love i love each each place so i found that um yeah i'd say asia going into asia was probably um where i started to understand what solo travel could bring me yeah but and the thing that it brought you was freedom more or less yeah yeah yeah, or the, the sense that you're not, yeah, freedom. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I was going to reword that, but it's literally the word free. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, gonna... that's what I understood from it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you ever meet a fellow traveler that had an impact on you? In it, like someone that you just remember? And I was just wondering if they're like, you really connected or maybe not so much and why? 
Mm, I didn't expect for me to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer all the questions. <laughs> Otherwise, this is just a, an interview. It's not even. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I have so much trouble with my memory. That is not true. On those things, yes, it is true. Um, oh, I don't know. Like one person, I guess it's like the a mix of people I've met on my travels, and I just admired them because most of the travelers I was meeting were in hostels, like in dorms. Yeah. For example, and you know, you know how it is. Like you meet someone, oh, like um, for how long have you been here? Where have you been? Where are you going? You know, like the classic yeah, you've travel the check, questions. The, the checklist is like exactly. these to sort of get the basics. Yeah, for how long have you been traveling? And blah blah blah. And most of the people I've I've met. Men, some of them were like, yeah, like I've been traveling for like four months now. Like I've been there and there and there. And I was like, I was looking at them with, uh, in awe. Like I was in awe. There was like glitters in my eyes. I was like, mm. oh my God, my dream. I want to be like you when I grew up. That <laughs> type of thing. You know? So, yeah, I remember I was in, I was in Dublin. I was in Dublin and I met, funny enough, I met this Australian guy. <laughs> it oh, wasn't boy. you. <laughs> Competition. Competition. <laughs> his name was Joseph. Oh, and he's got a name. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why I remember his name, but we we cooked together a mushroom. <laughs> don't look at me like that. Nothing happened, <laughs> okay? We cooked together and it was funny. It was really platonic. <laughs> uh, was platonic. Like platonically, it was great. <laughs> just, and then like we, we bought a bottle of wine, we drank it in the park and just chatted. And he told me about his travels and he's, he has been traveling for the last year, year and a half. And he was telling me about this Norwegian girl he met while traveling and it was like oh i miss her so much and na 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 and i was like wow it's crazy that he met what he said was his soulmate that... basically haha -ha. <laughs> no pun intended no pun intended soul <laughs> soulmate <laughs> and i was like wow like that's crazy it's crazy because why you should restrain yourself to date people only like in your country yes of course it's easier mm -hmm. but you love a challenge i do love a challenge <laughs> <laughs> i do love a challenge but yeah now i i don't know why i would always remember that night where a bottle of wine in a park in dublin with total stranger didn't exchange any informations and in next next morning we just you know like uh how do you say it we I parted ways. Yeah, we parted ways and that's it. And I oh. think he just made such an impact on me and how I see, how I started seeing long distance relationship. And I was like, Do, oh man, it's going to sound so cheesy, but like, if you really love someone, distance doesn't matter. And I guess this process, process inside of me really started when um, I met him. But yeah. Him. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, uh -huh. Are you uh, jealous? No, I'm not jealous. <laughs> no, because if you're jealous, then I would have a lot of reasons to be jealous with you, though. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> this, this, this is going to be a conversation for another podcast. Excellent. I guess episode. Yeah, I guess the title will be Sex and Traveling. Oh, <laughs> wow. You you would have a lot to say. No, I I, I want to keep what I've got to say uh, locked away. Locked away. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about bad moments. Uh... <laughs> I mean, they weren't all bad. Maybe not. Uh, um, yeah. So, what was the toughest moment of your solo travels, and what did you learn from it? I mean, that can be sort of taken a, a couple of different ways. I think. 
one of the one of the tougher moments because I'm trying to sort of think like both physically and emotionally, but there was there was a time when uh, I guess I felt fairly isolated when I was in the UK because mm-hmm. I was like it was very early on. I was it was literally the first three weeks of being in the UK. I was crashing with one of my mates from university, um, Nick, and he was living and working over there as a paramedic. Absolute top bloke, but I didn't realize how much of an impact my being there in his place Mm -hmm. had an impact on him and his housemates. Mm -hmm. And I felt awful because there wasn't the communication back and forth in the same sort of way and because i didn't have any plan i just wanted to hang out with my friend it didn't yeah but he had a life he had a life there and and obviously Mm. looking back on it i i realized i had very much overstayed my welcome Mm -hmm. and it like i like i did and it's not like i was you know leaving trash everywhere like you know not cleaning up in the kitchen which is something i do at the moment yeah um (laughs) but it's when you've got i think it was about five or six people in the one place right. plus someone that's sleeping on the couch. Yeah. It makes it very difficult. Yeah. On top of the fact being a paramedic is a very stressful yeah. job and you come right back. How long? Time. How long did you stay there? Like two weeks. And it was probably yeah. it was probably about five days too long. Yeah. Like from the not the longest point, but like mm-hmm. from a comfortable time. And mm-hmm. I and from then I think I actually not didn't lose a friend. I feel like if I was to reach out again to him, it would be fine. Yeah. But I know that I feel like that was a really, really tough point because mm. I sort of felt like I lost a friend to an extent. Like I, I sort of burnt, burnt out what I had mm-hmm. to, an, to mm-hmm. a point. So I feel like that was probably... Yeah. up there with some of my earlier travels and then but like and what did you learn from that experience i guess so being a bit more independent <laughs> and because because i guess because i'd always relied on someone at some point to help me out with stuff yeah and because I, there was always that reliance i didn't understand how mm-hmm. to be more independent and i think that mm-hmm. was something that i was looking for not exclusively when I wanted to start traveling, but like, I just sort of felt like I always had someone over the top of me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when I had the option, I didn't dive into what it was that I wanted. So, and it affected my friend. So, um, and obviously his housemates and things. So that was a bit, that was a bit of a learning curve. And so when I have, uh, rather than sort of not say, Oh, can I crash at your place? And then not say a date crush your place for three nights mm-hmm. like like have a definitive time to yeah. leave so that way they can one emotionally prepare for me to be in their life for three days because you're you're so you're so full on <laughs> you're <laughs> so full on to have on yeah, yeah. i mean that's her that's why you love me right yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so it's it's being a bit more um, not putting people in a position where they are now in an uncomfortable mm-hmm. spot, like, hey man, like, please move on. Dude, but and it's such a hard conversation to have to just kick your friend someone out, out of yeah. your place, like, shit. Yeah, so he didn't have that conversation with me, and I didn't have that conversation with him as to when I was going to leave, because I just want, yeah, I wasn't really sure, I was a bit confused with everything. Oh. And I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I wanted, where, which direction to go. This is the first time I'm on. I'm literally on the other side of the planet where I, I'm used to being. You know what? Maybe right now with his mates, they're like, remember that guy when he stepped at our place for like two fucking whole weeks? Like he was such an asshole. Such an asshole. We should have never let him in. Yeah. But... And they're just having like great yeah. chats about it. They, pro- they probably have because there, there, there were some times there that I'm like. Like the there's, there's, there's something that felt weird about being there and I didn't know what it was. And then I, when I left, I went, it was just me physically being around yeah. all the time. <laughs> and then, and then, um, yeah. And I, I started to learn that I didn't learn that. I wasn't really learning that lesson straight away. So I ended up crashing with another, another friend who I'd met, um, while traveling with my, my family. So, uh, so uh-huh. And I crashed with her for a little bit. Uh-huh. Separate rooms, don't worry. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I crashed with her. And then I realized getting sometimes getting to know someone where they live and how they are mm-hmm. versus how they are on holiday. Oh, my God. Is it the one that was super OCD? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, you like, told me Like, to the point where she didn't even have salt and pepper because she didn't need the flavor. No. Yeah. Wasn't it something with exact- utensils and Yeah, things? she had exactly three, like, it was, like, three forks, three knives, and, like, three spoons. Or not even. It was, like, it was like two spoons each. No. Yeah, because she didn't have guests over. And, like, like her main room was quite, lo- like, her living room was wonderfully decorated with, like, you know, photos that she'd taken yeah. around her travels and stuff. But then her bedroom was stark. It didn't even have like a, like it was just a mattress on the floor. Nicely made. Like it was, it was neat. It was tidy, yeah. but it was like sterile. It was minimalist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It felt very cold at times. Mm-hmm. And getting... Is it, uh, Norway? Mm, uh, that I met her. Oh, you met her in Norway, but then she was living in the England. UK. In England. Okay. Yeah, somewhere yeah. I, uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Okay, it was outside okay, of London. Okay, okay. But what was the reason for it? Was it because she didn't have much money and she was, or no, she, she was saving? Like, like she, she had a, a plan, and then I realized how, like, mm-hmm. in the as far as headspace goes, because I was, you know, in the back of my head, I'm sitting there going like, maybe something else could happen here. Yeah. And then I realized, I fucking hope not. <laughs> like. Because there was like so so many instances where she was talking about a relationship that happened four years ago, mm-hmm. and was like, yeah, he like he did this, that, the other. So I like I save all my money rather than spend it on like trivial stuff. And like there were elements that I'm like, totally get, yeah, like, saving for travel, totally get. Yeah. But like there was some things that it felt like it was like the extreme of like everything, <laughs> and so like we didn't do anything fun per se, oh. and then we and then. She was like, oh, like, I'm driving to Bath to, like, meet a friend. I'm like, sweet, can I come? Mm-hmm. So I can go to Bath and leave. And and stay there. Yeah, because I... You did, packed everything. I was, like, like I, I like, I packed all my stuff. I mean, mind you, it was just one back... Well, two backpacks. Yeah. But packed all my stuff and then, yeah. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'm starting to get the gist as to what's happening. You used her. To, like, to a point, <laughs> I would, like, yes, yes. I mean, like, if you're asking someone to crash at their house, you're using them for, a like... A minor service as well as friendship and then i realized the friendship was a little bit way way yeah uh-huh. and i and i'm not and i'm not sure if that was just the clash of personalities wrong time she was still working like there was things mm-hmm. that contributed to it mm-hmm. it was just uh yeah my expectations didn't get sort of yeah met but i did learn that from then on okay yeah no more like like i'm not going to be crashing with people for more than a couple of nights at most it's so interesting because for you it's like the toughest moment that you learn from yeah yeah i, I mean it's usually we the... have so much different toughest moment damn i'm gonna share you mine right now please do because <laughs> i'm tired of talking about myself so that was that was yeah during those same years where i was micro solo traveling and i no, no, actually, that was after Greece and Italy. I decided to go to Portugal. And I asked people, is it safe to go as a female uh, solo traveler? As everyone was like, oh my god, yes, like super safe, like everything was going to be fine and everything. So I was in Porto. 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 Yes. And I was in the middle of the city was walking, visiting, taking photos, like, exactly, having fun, (laughs) having my best life. (laughs) And then I hear, like, a guy, mid-40s, yeah, mid-40s or, like, 50s, something like that, and he's, like, talking to me and a bit, like, not scream, but, like, chat calling me. Ah, right. You know, in Portuguese. And doing like animal sound, like mm, like stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, he was maybe 10 meters, 10, 15 meters away from me. And I'm like, like okay, just behind me. Behind. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to ignore him. Like, it's annoying, but I'm just going to ignore him. That fucker followed me for like 20 minutes. What? 20 minutes. Cat calling me. And I was trying to, like, escape from him. And, of course, I was trying to go where there was a lot of people. But yeah. I was in the middle of the city. There's always like, a lot of people. There's always a lot of people. Yeah. I-, I wasn't in the shady area, which doesn't explain that it would have been okay. Well, yeah. You know? But it's the it's the, um, the place that I least expected it. And I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? Mm. 
I'm alone, I don't speak the language, there's a guy following me. Um, he doesn't look like he's in his right mind. He was on something, he was on something. Okay. Anyway, I went to the historical train station there. It's, it was like the biggest, because I saw security guards. Oh, fair enough. I saw security guards. And I was crying. I was trying to explain to them in English, like, there's a guy following me, na na na. And they were nice enough. Like, honestly, they were really nice enough. And they were like, look, we're gonna go around. Uh, I tried to, like, describe, describe the guy to them. But they were like, okay, like, stay here for, like, 15 20 minutes he probably went away but stay here mm. for now and i was just crying in this stairs of a, an amazing like train station like architectural historical thing i was like crying and then someone uh taps on my shoulder yeah goes like on my shoulder and I, I cry I, I turn around <laughs> my face is like all red I have tears everywhere and it's like a girl is like can you take a photo of us please oh my gosh and I, <laughs> read the room yeah read the room and I'm like because back in the days like I didn't understand what boundaries were <laughs> I was like okay yes and I was taking photos of them I was like those bitches like why they can't see that I'm crying and I'm not well I took my pictures and they're like thank you and they went away and I was like they didn't even check in no they didn't check in they're like thank you like big smile I'm like fuck up <laughs> like fuck up and I was like fuck that shit and anyway uh <laughs> I went away. I was so mad I, switched, I, I can hear it I switched from being like super sad from like being super super mad of like oh my god people people they lack of empathy well it's awareness just... i would say oh no empathy okay fair <laughs> enough anyway uh what i learned from it <laughs> is oh and it's gonna be so sad but what i learned from it is where you th think you are safe is where you put your guards down and it's where you're more at risk Jesus, pretty yeah. yeah, that's pretty. Sorry. Well, let's take a moment, everyone, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to digest it. Um, yeah, and it sucks, but um, that's true. Um, saying that though, I can still enjoy a moment, but I guess I'm just a bit more aware. Yeah. Um, like you have but what I learned from that learning. <laughs> was that well i can go everywhere if even in a safer country i'm being sexually harassed well i can go in a country where it's i guess a bit more dangerous and i'm gonna be aware and i'm gonna be fine because mm -hmm. i'm gonna know what to do so that's why now i don't mind going into more like underground countries where no one goes because i'm like there's gonna be fun stuff to do there, and now I'm prepared if something happens. Yeah, happens, but yeah. Nah, that's, I know that, crazy, right? That, that sort of that sort of thing is kind of yeah. That, that sort of thing is upsetting because I know that. Uh, yeah, it just feels it feels weird that mm -hmm. something like that would happen, mm -hmm. and then furthermore that the, mm -hmm. the the girls didn't even yeah chip in, which I think is just so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, no, it's crazy. But yeah, I guess that was one of my learning. But it, it was the toughest moment. Yeah, I couldn't really of my travel. The toughest myself, but that was. Yeah, but. That's a pretty big one. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you very much. But regardless, like solo traveling has brought me so much stuff about myself, like understanding my boundaries, yes. um, just understanding my needs as well like we talk about about boundaries but it's also about my needs like my first travel um alone when i was in brighton i was like hmm, what time is it oh it's two i'm hungry i'm gonna go now hmm, where do you feel like going hmm, i feel like having scone and tea 
scones scones and tea you know and i just did it i didn't have to ask anyone you were independent i was self-dependent i was self-dependent but just that it sounds stupid but then after that after all those solo travels when i'm back home i can go to the restaurant alone Ah, i yeah, can yeah. do stuff by myself and i feel comfortable comfortable doing so mm. you know i i freaking went to a show by myself it was james bay i went alone it was the best show of my life you know it was cool i didn't need to worry about oh my god i'm gonna lose my friend no 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 it was just so cool but prior to solo traveling i would have never done it yeah but yeah but i know that it's a lot of people are a bit scared to do it but i guess what would be what would you recommend to like someone that isn't sure about jumping <laughs> well i for one wasn't sure about jumping so i did a little Literally. My... well yes 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 mm -hmm. uh jumping uh bungee jumping pun intended mm -hmm. but the i would say like if you're not sure pick a weekend pick mm -hmm. a weekend and mm -hmm. maybe even go to a place you already know but you go by yourself yeah yeah and i think because that's what like i didn't know byron bay but i knew of it because everyone talked about it yeah and it's your country it's my country same like, state same state yeah um mm -hmm. the only difference is for me i rather than driving i flew yeah because otherwise from sydney to byron it's like eight or nine hours so it's a good good hefty drive but getting on the plane like going through customs going on the plane yeah coming in making sure that you organize travel to hostels and so mm -hmm. like 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 just you do more or less the bare basics of what you would need to do in any city in yep. any situation and just sort of realizing yeah. i'm on holiday it's yeah. baby steps it's the baby steps like it's you don't a weekend in your same country country yeah. country 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 that's <laughs> can't country damn i'm tired <laughs> you know what i mean guys <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like going mm -hmm. going to a spot that you've like the thing that helps also is not like if you want to go with friends you can still do that but if all your friends bail don't bail too because mm -hmm. i learned that when i was at um what was it, schoolies my mate sean and i we had in total there was supposed to be seven or nine guys everyone pulled out not those nine guys everyone pulled out yeah. except sean and i and we mm -hmm. were like yeah, we'll still go. Yeah. And we had a great weekend. Of course. It was great. Yeah. Like, we still, like, you still, you still commit to it because it's something that you want to do. You don't want to be always influenced by what other people mm -hmm. think or are doing. So, yeah. yeah, I think, I think all in all, just little, little steps, but. Baby just step. Yeah. But be, be okay with making mistakes as well, I think is something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess that's a Maybe. really good trick. That's a really good tip. Sorry. And I guess it's just about like i said just making the first jump however big or small mm. it might be yeah i would recommend going to a place that has signal uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, like not, not not taking too big a jump that you're now lost yeah no phone no satellite no nothing so but yeah so, okay. something that do, doing a bucket list item that you want to do i reckon is a a good way to start and that's something that you know i found to be very very useful mm -hmm yeah i agree i guess i would say the same tips same sort of tips yeah start small work yeah. way up you're so you're full of wisdom it's thank you I'm... so much for your wisdom yeah it's because <laughs> i'm wearing a, an upshot beanie exactly um and listeners <laughs> if you want more wisdom <laughs> make sure to follow us make sure to like make sure to send us comments as well or questions about i guess your own experiences about solo traveling um if you're not sure about solo traveling what you know because sometimes it's just, it's just someone that can push you a bit more and tell you the right thing and then you're going but honestly don't be afraid to just reach to us reach out to us yeah reach out to us yeah that would be cool but thank you very much for listening everyone and but where would they reach us yeah you can reach <laughs> us everywhere <laughs> no not everywhere so you can reach us on instagram on facebook on tiktok 
and on YouTube under the name of The Upshot Project. Fantastic. Thank you very much and see you for the next episode.